After 14 years, we finally get the long-awaited sequel to The Incredibles. Hi, I'm Isaac and this is Movie University. On this channel, I do movie reviews with behind-the-scenes info and the occasional educational video. So if you like what you see today, be sure to subscribe. The Incredibles made a distinctive mark when it was released back in 2004. Director Brad Bird created an original, high-quality superhero storyline that was loved by many. 14 years later, the story continues with the Parr family living a somewhat secluded life. Superheroes are given a new chance to prove to the world they are a force for good, with the last of girdle being put into the forefront of a new PR campaign. Now, one of the things that has aggravated me for a lot of years is why hasn't there been a sequel released for The Incredibles? We got Toy Story 4, we got Throne Finding Dory, and got Cars 2 and 3 shoved down our throats, but no sequel for The Incredibles or for Wally for that matter. Director Brad Bird has stated numerous times over the years that he did not want to make a sequel to The Incredibles unless he felt it was as good as the first one. After all this time, the wait is over and it has most definitely been worth it. Incredibles 2 is like the first one in that even though it's a kids movie, there's a slight adult feel to it. A lot of the dialogue, behavior of the characters, and innuendos are geared more toward an older audience, which allows the movie to be enjoyed by all ages. Now, for instance, I feel like a lot of today's movies push a certain political agenda. However, with Incredibles 2, I feel differently. While there are some political things here and there, there are also multiple messages from multiple political viewpoints to give a complete picture. In this movie, Bob Parr is the one staying at home with the kids. This is not because of some role reversal or message that women are as strong as men, but because circumstances in life have required him to stay at home to raise the kids while mom is at work. The scenes at home with Bob can be a little boring, but there are also some of the best in the movie, particularly the ones with baby Jack-Jack, who we find out has many, many superpowers. You have powers! <laughs> yeah, baby! You might find the villain here a little flat. There wasn't a whole lot that made this villain stand out from other villains, but I can forgive this since it's a kid's movie and all. With all the upper age group talk, your kids might get a little restless. However, there are still quite a few friendly kid jokes thrown in and tons of action to enjoy. Bird gives a very nice, fresh look at superheroes in a world where we get four superhero movies a year and countless TV shows about them. Looking behind the scenes, there is still an equal amount that impresses. If you compare this movie to the first Incredibles, you'll laugh a bit at how far CG animation has come. The movie utilizes today's technology to make images look more fluid and even a little photorealistic in some scenes. The Incredibles movies have a flat color palette by design. They have a lot of grays, browns, whites. Brighter colors that are on screen like greens and blues tend to be subdued. However, when there is action on screen, the color is really ramped up here. The Dolby Vision color grading really helps those colors pop, giving a visual delight to action or moments of drama. Now, Disney and Pixar have a history of releasing top-notch audio tracks for their movies. The first Incredibles had a solid 5.1 DTS HD master audio track that delivered. The sequel here is no different. Depending on where you see the movie and what format you'll hear Incredibles 2 in, it is mixed in DTS-X and Dolby Atmos and a few others. The audio is very impressive with the great use of surround channels and good bass direction. In my opinion, movies oftentimes put too much bass in action sequences or just for the sake of putting it in there to make a scene feel heavy. Incredibles 2 does not do that, which makes the movie feel much more natural. Hollywood veteran Michael Giacchino brings some good tunes to this wick. You'll recognize his name from scores like movies like Star Trek Beyond, Doctor Strange, Rogue One, Spider-Man Homecoming, and Coco. The mixture of suspenseful Mission Impossible style music with appropriate use of horns gives a very 50s feel to the movie and fits perfectly with what is going on on screen. Incredibles 2 is probably something you'll want to buy to demo off your home theater system with when it comes time to purchase the movie. You got everything under control, right? In a world filled with sequels in which many are nowhere near as good as the first, Incredibles 2 lives up to the hype and is definitely worth seeing in theaters.
Let me know what you thought of the movie in the comment section below, and be sure to subscribe on your way out. I'm Isaac, and this is Movie University.